Good morning. This, this is uh, our 8.30 opportunity to talk about climate action for the Evansville community. And I'm Tara Barney. I'm the CEO of the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce. I think I know most everyone that I saw signed up for this call. So thank you for being with us this morning and taking some time to uh, uh, learn and share input on this opportunity for our region. Uh, I want to take just a moment to, um, to explain how the chamber approaches these things. We have a series of councils, one of which is our Environment and Energy Council, and Chris Zirkelbach is here on the call. If you're being visual, you can see him on the screen. Chris heads up that council, and we're deeply appreciative of all the time and effort he invests in helping to inform and educate our members on those issues that are uh, critical to making sure that we have a robust and healthy business environment. So Chris, we appreciate all you do. And this uh, town hall today is being hosted by the council. Um, over time, it could evolve into things that the chamber wants to be more active in on public policy or that sort of thing. So uh, your time today is not only an investment in Evansville's uh, climate action plan, but it's an investment in what the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, stacks up as priorities for our organization and our business community over time. So thanks for all you do. For those of you that are not regular Zoom users, I'm gonna encourage you to uh, use your pointer to hover at the bottom, you'll see a, a, a thought bubble, which is a chat space. If you turn that on, that's gonna be important to this conversation. I'm probably preempting our, our primary presenter today by pointing that out, but I wanna make sure that if you have a thought or a comment, you use the chat feature to share it with us because we want this to be as interactive of a conversation as it can possibly be. And third, I'd like to acknowledge that I know on this call are a number of our chamber board members, and our, our significant investors and stakeholders. We appreciate all you do to lead this committee and to help us make sure that the greater Evansville region is one that can prosper at every, at every corner and can uh, be the place that people want to uh, build their careers, build their businesses, and if you're not already living here, to move to. So it's great to have you all with us today. I'm not gonna steal any more of that time except to make one more brief comment. Following this town hall, we'll send you out some additional materials that provide um, access to tools that your business may want to use or may find helpful. And I'm sure that Carolyn Townsend, who I'm about to introduce, will speak more to that because I'm, a, I'm really the conveyor of making sure that I send those to you. So that's my responsibility here. Uh, but I do want to uh, both thank and introduce Carolyn Townsend. She's a um, graduate student at IU. I'll let her introduce herself more specifically, but she's been working with the city of Columbus Columbus, Evansville, where do I work now? Uh, in Evansville to, um, to have a conversation about what the city might build into a climate action plan for the community over time. So I will introduce Carolyn and I'm also gonna take this moment to thank Timothy Weir, who many of you know. Timothy is uh, joining us and is gonna help facilitate the, the, the question and answer discussion later in the meeting. So sir, we appreciate you being with us this morning. But without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to you, Carolyn. Hi, thank you, Tara. Um, and thank you everybody for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time this morning. It's bright and early today. Um, so as Tara said, I'm a graduate student at IU in Bloomington doing a dual master's degree in public affairs and environmental science. And this summer I'm working out of the Environmental Resilience Institute for the city of Evansville to draft their climate action plan. So I have a couple slides prepared today. If we could go to the next one actually. Thank you. So here's what we're going to talk about today. So um, it's I'm first going to talk about the climate change impacts in Evansville specifically. Then I'll go into kind of what is a climate action plan, what we're proposing to put in the plan. I have a couple um, just general resources for businesses as a whole, and then Timothy will guide our discussion. So um, Timothy, would you like to introduce yourself a little more, and then I'll go ahead and dive in. Sure, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a retired Accuride executive, and uh, I also serve as a volunteer as the Commission on Homelessness Administrator for Evansville and Vanderbilt County, and I'm uh, acting as a consultant to the city and the mayor's office to work with Carolyn and, and complete this plan. Awesome, thank you. Okay, can we go to the next slide, please? So first, I'll talk about climate change and its impacts on Evansville that we're already experiencing. So we go to the next one. 
So here are just a quick couple pictures from that were taken last spring here in the Evansville region. Um, I'm sure you all, if you're here today, you remember the flooding that happened last spring. Um, I live in Bloomington full time and I remember it too and talking to farmers who at the farmers market about how they lost a lot of their crops last spring due to just the extensive flooding and I know that there's a lot of uh, damage associated with that and that's one of the many effects that we'll talk about today when it comes to climate change and just kind of to bring it um, bring it into context because climate change is a global issue and we usually talk about it globally but it's something that we experience the effects of locally and that's why it's really important to important to hone in on those so we go to the next slide so every fact I'm about to give you comes from the Purdue um, Climate Change Research Center and their Climate Change Impacts Assessment. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. Um, so this is just a graph that is showing the uh, average statewide temperature increase over time. And if you've ever seen a graph uh, or the hockey stick graph is what it's uh, commonly called with climate change is you see this upward trend of temperature that's usually aligned with carbon dioxide emissions. And I like showing this one particularly because it's specific to Indiana. So the global trends that we're seeing with climate change with right, this overall average increase is being seen right here at home. Um, the red section is a higher emission scenario. So what we're going to see if we don't stop um, or lower our emissions. So that means if we st don't stop engaging in activities that um, involve directly or indirectly burning fossil fuels that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Um, those greenhouse gases are absorbing right the sun's uh, radiation and heat energy, which is raising our overall average temperature. So that red section there is showing us what will happen if we continue in a business as usual scenario. Um, the green area is showing the temperature increase we'll see if we do mitigate and address climate change now. Um, as you can see, there is regardless of what we do, we are going to continue to see a temperature increase, but it's we're talking about how dramatic will that temperature increase be. Um, one thing to know now, um, on average, Indiana has already seen a 1.5 degree Fahrenheit average increase since 1895. And by 2050, if we are enter into that red scenario, we're going to see a, approximately five to six degrees Fahrenheit of an average increase in temperature. So that's pretty dramatic and it um, has a lot of different effects. So let's go ahead to the next slide. So one um, effect that we'll see from climate change we're already experiencing, so not only is that overall average temperature increase, but we're going to see more days in the year that are really hot. So when I say really hot, I mean above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, Currently in Vandenberg County specifically, we see about seven of those days a year. Um, and it's projected to increase to 60 days a year above 95 degrees Fahrenheit um, by 2050 and just continue to increase. Um, and that's kind of alarming because we're not even talking about 90 degree days, which are already very hot. We're talking specifically about over 95 degrees. And this is really important because it poses a very, very serious health risk to people who are younger or our older population or who generally have um, compromised immune systems. Things like heat stroke are gonna become more common. More people on those days will end up in hospitals and that ultimately means that we're gonna be spending more money on healthcare, whether it's on ourselves, our family, or our employees. Um, also, we're going to see decreased crop yield as a result of this. I mentioned flooding earlier about decreased crop yield with farmers. With extreme heat, we'll see the same type of thing. Plants um, and crops can only withstand a certain temperature and with extreme heat, a lot of them will die. Um, and that will ultimately result in money lost by farmers, but also money, um, more money spent by us as consumers because as we know, right, the less of a product that there is, the more expensive it's going to be. And then another thing that we'll see is increased cooling demand. So what that means is we'll be running our air conditioners more often. And when we run our air conditioners more often, we're pulling more energy from the grid. And it just kind of perpetuates this cycle of utilizing more energy and continuing to contribute to the problem if that energy is being derived from fossil fuels. So we can go ahead to the next slide. Oh, uh, that also in the corner just switched to our cooling degree days a year. So that's just showing that increase in the number of days in a decade that we'll be running our air conditioners. So that's in line with the increasing hot days trend. Next slide. Again. Thank you. So um, sorry, I'm a little bit of a formatting issue here. That's okay. Um, these two graphs are um, illustrating how 
we are going to be seeing just shorter winters overall. And that means that we're gonna have fewer frost days. So days that are below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is problematic for a couple reasons I'll go into in a moment. We're also going to see fewer snow days. So what that means is while historically in Vanderburg County, we've seen 15 days a year with snow, instead of 15 days, we'll see fewer days with snow and those days that were originally snow days will just be rain instead. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, so why does this matter? When we have fewer frost days, that means that that expands the amount of time in a year that pests can reproduce and spread. So when I say pests, I mean primarily ticks and mosquitoes and those pests carry diseases. So not only will we see more pests, but we'll see uh, there will be a higher likelihood of disease outbreaks, um, which is definitely alarming considering our current situation. Um, another thing that we'll see in a positive light, I suppose, is a longer growing season. So that could be beneficial in numerous ways. Um, thirdly, we're also going to see, and we already have begun to see changes in migration patterns among different um, animal species, such as birds, and then um, different patterns of when plants will flower. So these um, animals and plants are very de temperature dependent. So if um, it's really hot one day or it's, we have longer winters, that's gonna throw off their internal cycle and that can be really problematic and, uh, for different plant and animal species. Next slide. So another thing that we're gonna see as a result of climate change in our area and that we're already seeing is heavier as well as more frequent precipitation, so rain. Um, if you take a look at the map on the right, you'll see in our region, we've seen an increase in 6.2 inches of precipitation on average a year. Um, sorry, just on average uh, since 1895. So that's already a lot more rain that we're seeing. And we've also already seen a 42% increase in the actual amount of rain falling during each rainfall. And so that means that whenever it does rain, we have a higher risk of flash flooding and flooding in general, because there's just more rain that's falling to the earth. And this is just projected to increase moving forward. This matters because we're going to experience even more drainage problems than we already have, because we don't currently don't have the infrastructure to withstand really heavy rainfall like that. So like I was saying earlier, we'll see more flooding, but we're also going to see more water pollution because we're going to have more sheer water that's running off into the Ohio River and other bodies of water with um, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, just trash on the ground running off into the water. And then also we'll see more combined sewer overflow um, issues as we see more rain. So it's problematic in that sense, but also it's gonna be more costly generally because we'll have to replace infrastructure. We'll see more flood damage to our roads we'll see people's homes and businesses being damaged by flooding. And so ultimately, all of these effects that I'm talking about are going to lead to us spending more money down the road on um, fixing a lot of these problems. Next slide. Um, next slide. So uh, what is a climate action plan? So I'll talk about that real briefly. Um, the definition of a climate action plan is that it's a strategic plan that will outline how a city will reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, to mitigate climate change. Presently, South Bend and Indianapolis are the only other cities in Indiana that have enacted a climate action plan and are working towards the implementation of that plan. Bloomington is in the process of, uh, they're kind of halfway through working on their plan as well. And so we really, as a city, are kind of at the forefront right now, um, putting forth the, this plan and it's really giving us this awesome leadership opportunity and um, space for innovation, which is really exciting. Uh, next slide. So I like to talk briefly about our vision for the plan. This is going to be a 30 year plan, so quite extensive. Um, and we envision that by 2050, Evansville will be a regional leader in addressing climate change, as well as a zero waste community powered by renewable energy, where all people have access to efficient transportation alternatives, public green spaces, clean air and water, and locally sourced fresh food. So um, it's a really big uh, sweeping statement. It covers a lot of ground. But you know, when we are thinking about mitigating climate change or mitigating the effects of climate change, um, there's a lot of ground to cover. And we truly believe that this is a vision that is attainable. Um, next slide. So one thing I like to note as well is the term zero waste because I think it can be a little confusing for some folks. So the term zero waste just means diverting waste from the landfill. So instead of having throwing things away, it means we're increasing our recycling rate and we implement a composting system so that 
we're not throwing things in the landfill. They're instead being diverted and uh, we're putting those, that waste back into our system. Uh, next slide. Again, thank you. Um, okay, so what's gonna go into the CAP or Climate Action Plan? So it'll be structured as follows. We'll have um, an introduction that will kind of talk about climate change, how it's impacting us. So similar to some of the things I've been telling you already. That will be followed by uh, a greenhouse gas inventory description and emissions reduction goals, which I'll detail in a moment. And then we'll have this section, the bulk of the plan really, which will detail our action steps. So next slide. So this pie chart is showing the results of the greenhouse gas inventory we completed last year. And so this is a report that pulls data from numerous sources and um, it involves several calculations. It's a standard practice that cities um, around the world utilize to take into account where our emissions as a city are coming from. And we utilize this as a baseline to set emissions reductions goals moving forward. So while this study was conducted by the city in conjunction with the Environmental Resilience Institute last year, it was for the year 2017. And we found that 45% of our emissions as a city come from transportation, so driving cars, city fleet, that kind of thing. 26% of our emissions come from residential energy, 20% comes from commercial energy, 8% from solid waste, 0.5% approximately from process and fugitive emissions. So that's um, a leakage associated with natural gas usage. And then lastly, 0.5% from the water and wastewater. Next slide. So we're utilizing that report to kind of structure, okay, well, what areas of our you know, society do we need to focus on to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? And we help specify this by establishing our emissions reduction goals. So we'll have three of them. We'll have one for 2030, one for 2040, and one for 2050. And it'll look something like Evansville will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by X percent by 2030 based on 2017 levels. And this allows for the plan to be data driven and we can measure our progress as we go on because this plan will call for progress reports um, every year um, or at least uh, biannually. So this will help us kind of track that progress. Next slide. So the bulk of the plan, like I was saying before, are these action steps. So this is actually a screenshot that comes from the Iowa City Climate Action Plan that they did in 2017. And theirs is really excellent because they split theirs up um, by category and we're planning to do the same. So they have a building section, which we'll have. We'll also have transportation and waste as our primary sections. And we'll have each action step laid out in kind of just a statement format. And then we're also going to specify what sector that applies to. So as you can see on the screen, there's home, work, and government. Home applies to residents. So what can you do residentially, whether that's in an apartment complex or just at a, if you're a homeowner? Work applies to kind of any type of work field. So that could be something at the University of Evansville or at our school corporation or a nonprofit in the area, small business, one of our larger corporations. It kind of is a catch-all there. And then government is city specific operations. So what will the city itself be doing and kind of leading as um, you know, our city government moving forward. Um, the next part, which I think is probably one of the most important parts is we'll have a cost benefit analysis that'll kind of look similar to the screenshot. So it'll give you a general idea of, well, how much is this action if we implement it? How much will that cost relative to another action? Um, and it will also give us a general idea of our local GHG impact. So how much of our emissions will we reduce by enacting that particular action and how much money will it cost? And then I plan to also specify potential sources of funding. So where can we find the money for that? Who are our responsible parties going to be in ensuring that action is actually enacted? Next slide. So this is also um, an additional part we'll add. This is a screenshot from the South Bend Climate Action Plan. And um, they did a really great job of listing out the co-benefits of each action. So this is a really important point to highlight because it's really easy to silo and think about this as just, we're just addressing climate change and that's all it is. When really, when you're addressing climate change, you're addressing all aspects of society. And we really want to highlight that with these symbols. So that first one would be something that would help um, boost public health in our area or boost our economy and create jobs or beautify our city or perhaps increase accessibility to public transportation. We'll also have um, a component that talks about equity, which I'll detail a little bit later. Next slide. 
So this is kind of a basic table format that's showing the general overarching themes of what we're thinking about putting in the plan. We've begun drafting it, so we're in the initial phases, but we're still really just trying to get feedback from the community, and this is kind of why we're here today. But here's what we're thinking thus far. You'll see the term equity at the top. That is a primary focus for us in this plan. Um, every single action will be written with an equity lens, and we plan to have um, people on our stakeholder committee that um, will be focused specifically on making sure that this plan is equitable. So acknowledging that you know, the term environmental racism is very real and that you can draw a direct relationship, and we've known this for decades, between where communities of color live and where air pollution or toxic waste is at its worst. And so, you know, this is not something that's unique to Evansville. This is a national problem. And as we write this plan, we want to address that issue head on throughout the entire plan and implementation process. So what are we thinking for transportation? One of the biggest things for us is kind of figuring out how we can expand our public transportation system to make it convenient and desirable because it's so easy for us to just want to take our cars. How do we expand the bus routes and add more buses to our fleet, you know, in that way, creating jobs and adding buses that are electric, right? And adding different types of amenities to incentivize people to take the bus. And this is moving forward. I know that there are concerns right now with public transportation, especially during COVID, but um, just, you know, contextually thinking about this is a 30 year plan. Um, so we're thinking about it long term. Secondly, we're really considering electric vehicles and how we want to um, you know, partner with different nonprofits that help um, finance uh, being able to lease or adopt electric vehicles as an individual, as a city, or even as a business and converting your fleet to EVs. So creating those partnerships and incentive programs. Also with city planning, um, we really wanna emphasize transit-oriented development, connectivity, and high-density development. So what that means is building our city up rather than out. And when we do you know, plan and develop our city, we do it in a way that's oriented towards transportation. So again, making that bus system more desirable, making our city more walkable, bikeable, and um, you know, implementing complete streets so that you, have, you can still have cars, but they have parking, we have trees on the side of the road, and we have protected bike lanes so that people feel safer when they walk or bike. With buildings and energy, we really want to focus and hone in and continue to support the transition to renewable energy. There's, also, there's already a lot going on right now um, in Evansville with um, the transition to renewables, which we're very excited about, and we want to continue to encourage that process moving forward um, within city operations, but just generally, and making that transition to renewables more affordable for um, individuals, because we know that some of some things such as solar can be can come at a high upfront cost. So how do we work to ensure that these um, this transition is more affordable to businesses and individuals? And then next, we're uh, we really want to encourage energy efficiency and retrofitting in buildings. So making rebate programs and um, already existing incentive programs transparent and available to people so that they're aware of those, but also creating um, other types of programs that are run through the city for our residents and businesses to take advantage of. I mentioned, uh, well actually I haven't mentioned yet, green space. That is a big priority for us. We um, have looked extensively at the transportation plan, the millennial plan, the bike and pedestrian plans, and all of them kind of say, tell a very similar story in that Evansville residents want more green space. They want access to green space, to trails, to bike lanes, things like that. And so as we consider and develop this plan, how do we um, continue to promote and really advocate for more green space as we develop? Thirdly, in our waste category, composting infrastructure, I would say, is probably one of our top priorities. And the goal is to have a residential composting pickup program within the next couple of decades, hopefully sooner, of course, as soon as possible. But that is um, you know, a really big infrastructure change. What that program would look like would be you would have a compost bin that would go alongside your recycling and trash that the city would pick up. Um, but also encouraging composting businesses to come to Evansville so that residents who don't um, utilize the city's recycling and composting services can have their own recycling or um, composting infrastructure. And then once we have a solid composting infrastructure in place, then it's starting to um, help individuals and businesses switch to and move to biodegradable and compostable packaging. But of course, that is something that's not going to be viable unless we have actual composting infrastructure. Hence why composting is a big priority. 
I would say our second really big priority when it comes to waste is increasing our recycling rate and lowering contamination rates with recycling. Recycling is confusing and it's always been confusing. And so we see this as an opportunity to clarify and help people understand and make recycling just more accessible to folks in our area. Lastly, community gardens. We want to encourage the development of community gardens throughout the city um, in all of our neighborhoods. And um, lastly, with educational initiatives, kind of really drive home the importance of community gardens and how that will result in an emissions reductions, but increase food access, increase education, and um, just give us quick access to healthy food. Next slide. Okay, so real briefly, what are things that are happening in our region? And this is just kind of some general um, ways that as a business, uh, you could move towards these things like energy efficiency, recycling, solar, and green space. Next slide. Okay, so Vectron has a bunch of different um, rebates and different programs that are available to businesses. And so this will be, we will send this as a part of our follow-up with you all today, but they have a whole, they have several different um, lists of different ways that if you upgrade your some of your devices in your building, such as your air conditioners, low flow faucets, things like that, you can get money back for that. They also have a business custom program where you can have your business evaluated and they can, you know, identify what are the ways that you could become more energy efficient as a business. Um, like I said, they have incentives. So for things such as energy efficient lighting, heating and cooling equipment, commercial kitchen upgrades, and agricultural equipment. So again, we'll be sending you that information after this. Next slide. Republic also has a lot of really great educational materials that you can put up within your office building or business. And that's um, a screenshot of one of those on the right. So very clear signage on how to recycle, what can be recycled, making sure they are empty, clean and dry, huge thing. And then they, your recyclables are not bagged. So. Um, we will send you the link to um, the page that has all those flyers that are downloadable and they're high quality and you can print put those up. They also have, um, you're able to contact them and you can discuss with them and set up different types of recycling in addition to just single stream. They do battery and bulb recycling, so they'll have special buckets for that. And they also deal with different types of special waste. So partnering with them and asking them about, you know, what are ways that I can divert this type of waste they are um, always available to work on that. So we'll send some more information on that after this. Next slide. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention is uh, solar energy. Um, so if you're interested in solar, we have uh, several bits of information. It's a really great thing for a business to do in terms of energy independence and um, you know, actually lower, getting a fixed rate on your utilities and um, you know, having more reliability. So um, if you're interested in solar, that is something that's very viable here. Indiana is really great for solar. Um, and uh, so reach out to us after that, we can provide you with that information. Last thing I'll say is green space. So um, one thing that's really great is you can replace, and this is something you can do right now, you can replace grass um, with native plants and trees and that will help prevent erosion, runoff, it will encourage pollinators to come such as different uh, bees and, and um, it's something that will help beautify your area. It's something that you can do right now um, that is quite common. And it also lowers costs in terms of lawn and yard maintenance and lowers emissions by not using lawn mowers and leaf blowers. Another thing that's um, something that you can absolutely do and is already something that's happening in Evansville is uh, creating a community garden with composting. So um, it's a great way to educate employees on how to grow their own food, how to eat healthy, um, learning how to compost. And um, it's a really great way to build community as a business. And then green roofs are something that are common as well, um, where you, um, I'm sure, most of you on the call have heard of them before, right? You plant different, um, you could have a garden on your roof, but you could also just plant plants on there and that actually helps insulate and, and cool your building. So that's a really great option as well. Next slide. One thing as well that um, businesses and city governments do often is creating um, their own programs and their incentive programs for their employees, such as an employee commute program, where um, you know you have a competition where if you are taking alternate alternate transportation to work or if you're working from home right that doesn't involve transportation 
you can create um, a different competition or incentive programs. And that's a really great way to educate and encourage employees to find different ways to commute to work that doesn't um, involve emitting fossil fuels. And then um, you could also create an employee education program and um, having different sessions like this where you talk about a particular sustainability topic. Because I think one thing that is free would be just talking about climate change and talking about different ways and sharing how you as individuals are doing things to lower your carbon footprint. You could also do a sticker pledge program where um, you are, you, we are planning to do this with a plan that you commit to certain actions. And um, by doing that as a business, you get a sticker and that shows to your clientele that you're committed to addressing climate change. So just something to sort of throw out there. And we also know that um, there is a program in the works um, about uh, business sustainability certification programs that will be coming up hopefully in the spring of next year. And so you'll be hearing more details about that in the coming months. Next slide. So to a question for you all, we um, are curious as to, and if you're not doing anything at present, any, that's okay. But if you are, we would love to know what is your business doing to lower your carbon footprint or greenhouse gas emissions. So let's go ahead and take a minute. You can go ahead and type in the chat. What are you already doing um, to lower your footprint? And it could be something that I've listed already or um, something else. Should we just speak up, Carolyn? Can Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I I uh, I said to um, put it in the chat. Okay, chat. Yep. Thank you for asking. For those of you that are on the phone if you're not able to put in the chat feel free to shoot the, that information to me or share it briefly I think but uh, I know that not everyone's probably got the chat feature available if they're on the phone see um, Brad said solar on our business and we drive with plug-in hybrids when possible Matt Rice said um, seeing veterans plan at www.vectron.com slash IRP it is projected to lower CO2 emissions by 75% by 2035, transitioning to renewables. Yes, highly recommend taking a look at that. Jennifer says, um, the Mesker Park Zoo, they have geothermal cooling and heating for the new penguin exhibit. That's awesome. Composting, native plants conservation education to public and members, preservation, annual staff and member plastic rejection challenge, no straws at concessions, that's excellent. Lauren says, improving energy efficiency in buildings, planting more green space, green design and new exhibits, conservation education. Leslie said, new solar covered parking canopies at EVV, so, um, which will power half of the terminal. Learn more at evvforward.com. Yep. Um, Rena said, seeing veterans energy efficiency programs at veteran.com slash save energy. Thank you, Rena. Yes, and we will be sending flyers to you all as well about their programs. Um, Rob said, at Barry, we have had an energy reduction initiative for several years. We always make sure to buy the most energy efficient equipment when replacing old equipment. Great point. Cool. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and move on. If you have anything else, feel free to type it in the chat. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so one thing to just wrap up before we go into di the discussion, um, where are we in the planning process? Um, and then actually we do have a Zoom poll as well, and then we'll go into the discussion. Um, but in terms of the planning process, we are still conducting a survey um, that, oh, we're not, okay. I guess we'll just do the poll really quick since that's already popped up. Um, if you guys wanna just take a minute and answer the question, we're just gathering data on um, what residents and individuals have experienced in terms of the effects of climate change. So you can select more than one and go ahead and submit that.
Uh, Shanda, I'm not able to see the poll on my end, but um, if you want to give it another like 20 seconds and then you can close it and then show the results so that everybody can see. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so it looks like everybody has, out of all these effects, people have experienced at least some of them. Um, it looks like the highest one we've seen is the less less snow in the winter, definitely very real, as well as shorter winters and very hot days were some of the highest and wacky weather. So yeah, there are a couple of things on here that I didn't go into a lot of detail about due to just timing, but um, yeah, one effect we are seeing as a result of climate change um, is just really weird weather. So um, just dramatic day-to-day -day temperature shifts and um, extreme storms, things like that. So this kind of, this poll sort of just brings into perspective, you know, how are the effects of climate change are local and that they're already being experienced. So thank you guys for responding to that. Okay, so my last little bit and then Timothy will take over for the discussion. So just to kind of be transparent about where we are in the planning process, like I was saying before, we're conducting a survey with and we've had over 1600 responses. So we will also follow up with that survey link if you wouldn't mind sharing it with your, um, your business. And then um, if you haven't already, I know some of the people on the call already have. So thank you to those of you who have. Um, we have our last two town halls that are virtual this week. Um, it's one tonight at 6 p.m. and then one tomorrow at 10 a.m. So you could register on our website, climateevansville.com. And um, then we're also in the process of organizing several community workshops. So we're working on those and those are for specific uh, groups like the young people in Evansville, like high schoolers and middle schoolers, for example. We're still working on forming our stakeholder committee and kind of beginning that process and then, like I said earlier, I'm just beginning to draft the plan now, and it's uh, going to be, you know, a long process, but we're at the beginning part. We're, the goal is to dr finish a draft of it by the end of September, but we'll reevaluate that if, the, if there is a need to. Anyways, next slide, and we'll go ahead and hand it over to Timothy. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Carolyn. Welcome, and good morning, everyone. We're glad you're here this morning with us. During this part of the meeting, we'll be gathering your thoughts and suggestions to help Evansville increase its climate leadership in the years to come. To help us do that, we have several questions that we'd like you to respond to. And these are based on the Six Thinking Hats creative tool developed by Edward DeBono in the 1980s to help organizations gather information and build consensus around concepts. But before we start, it's important to remember that all of your ideas are valid and valuable. So believe in good intent in the next few minutes and be respectful of everyone's ideas. Uh, we all may come at this from a slightly different perspective, but we're all here to help create positive change and offer ways to make our community a better place, not just for us, but also for future generations. So during this portion of the meeting, I'd like you to continue keeping your mic muted. And as we go through the six topics, I'd like you to type your ideas, responses, or questions that you may have into the chat feature as we've done uh, previously. And then Carolyn and I will read as many of these as we can out to the group and answer your questions as we go. So we have about 20 minutes for this section uh, and um, we'll try very hard to get to everyone's points. Uh, and uh, the other thing I'd like to, to reiterate here is if we don't get to your comment, know that we are capturing all of the chat from each of our town hall meetings, including this one, so it can inform the contents of our plan. So we absolutely will capture your input. And then at the end, Tara will come back and wrap things up. So before we start, I'd like to reiterate an important point to us that we're making a concerted effort to hear from as many viewpoints in the community as possible. As uh, Carolyn mentioned, we're gathering ideas through town halls and the survey. We're also convening separate meetings with stakeholder groups. One focus is to hear from middle school and high school students. That was especially important to Mayor Winicky, and we're following through on that. We'll also connect with students at UE, USI, and Ivy Tech in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll be meeting and have met with economic development organizations and individual corporations. 
And then next week, we have a meeting planned with the local NAACP chapter. That's July 23rd. So now let's get to you. Uh, go ahead and uh, advance to the next slide. And the first way of thinking that we'd like to talk about is orange uh, in De Bono's process. And the question we'd like you to answer is, what information do you feel that you need yourself as an individual or your organization or business needs to help you reduce your carbon footprint, become more energy efficient, implement green initiatives, increase your green space? What other information would help you accomplish all of that? Just type your questions or thoughts in the chat feature if you would. What additional information would benefit you? And a, a quick follow up to that too, like where would you like to access that information? Like through social media, an email list, a website, what's easiest for you all? So Lauren says, what energy saving options are on the market and costs and availability and how the cost can be incentivized? Social media is a great option to be able to share with followers. Yep. Annie says, more information about composting and proper recycling to be found either on a website or an email list. Okay. It seems that recycling is often more difficult or perceived as more difficult for small businesses and multi-unit residential buildings. That's very true. Understanding the options and increasing the ease would be valuable. Yep. Hannah says, learning the most impactful reduction techniques for our region. As an individual, I'd be interested in the cost, time, commitment required for different initiatives. So individual and community, website, email, social media. Jennifer says, impact of our current behaviors, all promotional media outlets for education slash PSA campaign. Nate says, I think the main question that I hear from everyone is based around process and red tape. It always seems there are hidden steps which increases time and cost, having most of the knowns in order to make the right decision and timeline to completion. Yeah, really good point. Yeah, and Leslie also noted uh, examples of the things that businesses and organizations can do in the mm -hmm. major areas we talked about. Leslie, I think that's what you meant. Other comments, thoughts on um, information that you need? Andrew says, what the impact on long-term property value from adding solar energy generation for commercial or, or residential buildings? Shanna says, information on how each individual's actions can impact the overall goal. And Leslie says, yeah, yes, thank you to okay. Timothy. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on to the next question, if we could. Thank you for that. Appreciate the information. All right, in this one, uh, we'd like to know your thoughts on the benefits of the city of Evansville taking this initiative and creating a climate action plan and implementing the climate action plan in our community. Um, what are the ways in which this is going to help us? Welcome your thoughts here. Ashley says, millennial and Gen Z talent attraction. Sally says, this issue is important to younger generations. Demonstrating attention to the issue can help uh, attract talent. And we're finding that in our discussions with, uh, with those populations, for sure. Other thoughts? Lauren said, Risk, risks to people, plants, and animals can be reduced. Quality of life can be improved. Appeal to live in this region increased. Joanne says, will slash how will, yeah, how will building 
a community resilient to climate change be included in the cap? Um, I will address that question in a moment. Um, Sally says it can also improve quality, actual quality of life, which is valuable to all of us who choose to live here. Anna said, creating a healthier and more sustainable living space for citizens. Jennifer says, improve local and global climate, saving species that are vulnerable, improved health and well-being. Um, Joanne, to address your question, I think you're asking about like adaptation to climate change. So one thing that um, I didn't note earlier is that this climate action plan is specific to mitigation. So it's specifically focusing on how do we reduce our emissions. And of course, there will be added benefits to that. And, um, you know, there's the added aspect of just how do we make our community more livable. Um, but in terms of specifically adapting and how do we um, cope with the effects of climate change, there is a need for a plan of that sort. And that is something that's projected to hopefully be done next year. This plan is based on the greenhouse gas inventory that the city conducted last year with IU and its 2017 data will be our baseline for future uh, greenhouse gas reductions in Evansville. Um, Annie says equity, each neighborhood being exposed to good environmental health. Um, Kelly says, this will help benefit Evansville by getting the young professionals more involved in these discussions and focusing on a more sustainable life for all. Thanks for your input on benefits. I'd like to move to the next question now. Uh, and this addresses the flip side of that. We talked about benefits. What are the potential obstacles or risks or barriers that we will face in reducing our greenhouse gas emissions as a community. So barriers, risks, obstacles you see to accomplishing uh, what we're talking about this morning. We would love a young professionals meeting. Thanks for asking that, Tara. Help us make that happen. Other comments, risks, obstacles you see? Ash says, complete community buy-in. Jennifer says, financing, not enough public education to mobilize individuals. Leslie says, financial constraints, change resistance. Lauren said, cost and acceptance will be obstacles. Anna said, continued funding for long-term and ongoing initiatives. Education. Sally says, sometimes it's hard on a big issue like this for people to understand the what's in it for me, making it difficult to get individuals to change behaviors. Yes, absolutely. That's an important point. Nate says, public perception that if one person gets solar, for example, that others are punished by higher rates. To go back to Sally's point for just a moment, um, one of the things that we've noted in many of the successful climate action plans around the country is that, um, that personal component um, what can an individual do to make a difference and contribute to the effort? And uh, that'll be a focus of our plan. Uh, Chris said, global impact and competitive global markets. Other comments on risks, obstacles, barriers that you see? Okay, let's go to the next question then, which is red. The question is, how do you feel? This is a feeling question for uh, those of you who, uh, uh, like me, are uh, on the uh, uh, introvert scale of Myers-Briggs. 
How do you feel about Evansville addressing climate change? Becoming a community that reduces uh, its greenhouse gas emissions, uh, reduces wastes, and, and works to become a zero waste community in, in reducing its waste over time. What feelings does that give to you? And as you think about that, Andrew had one last comment from the last question that I think is important to note. He said for Iberia that some of the most successful actions carry high costs, either financial or time, and those costs need to come down to increase adoption. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So feelings. How does the idea of implementing this plan and reducing our greenhouse gas emissions make you feel? Jennifer says hopeful and validated. Others? Anna says happy, motivated, and optimistic. Any other thoughts? Lauren says, it makes me proud and hopeful to be part of a community that takes action to improve the quality of life and reduce risk to people and the environment. And I concur with the other feelings expressed. Thank you. All right, thank you for those. Uh, we're gonna move to the next question. Uh, and if you still have uh, comments on feelings, just uh, type them into the chat. Uh, but I want to allow a few more minutes for this question, which is your opportunity to share your ideas um, about uh, addressing uh, climate change, uh, becoming a climate leader as a community, um, and what are your thoughts on ways that we can do this? Are there things that you'd like to see us incorporate in the plan specifically? So welcome your ideas on how to make this the strongest plan possible for Evansville. What needs to go in this plan? What would be helpful for your business in adopting some of these practices? Oh, great, okay. Um, uh, Andrew said uh, recycling, making it easier and cheaper to recycle versus dispose, so increased costs to offset uh, for business and individuals. Jennifer uh, said a whole lot, so I'm going to just highlight some of the things to get everybody's comments. Um, support and incentivize organizations, events, and businesses to offer accessibility and plant-based foods, yep, to the city all year round. Publish and publicly report annual state of the city, yep. It's a progress report, absolutely. Increasing landscape requirements, assisting recycling centers, mandating cleanup and greening of recycling center sites, engage um, and support Keep Evansville Beautiful with public education, mobilize support from grassroots such as uh, United Neighborhoods of Evansville, help educate the public, require greening efforts for businesses and industry. Um, Sally said, starting with the city is valuable as it's the regional core. It will be truly impactful when it can be expanded to the rest of the regional community. Joanne said, keep it short, simple, and straightforward. Chris says, providing examples of success stories and the impacts like the Lloyd overpass. Brad says, Evansville needs more EV charging stations and these stations need to be coupled with solar energy. Mm -hmm. Callie says, keep with, uh, help live a more sustainable life in Evansville. Um, Andrew says, loan programs for solar projects. Lauren says, actions for the average citizen at home, not just in a commercial or industrial application. Make the actions realistic, accessible, and worthwhile, and find a way to make it applicable to individuals and convince them to take action. Thanks, Lauren. Other ideas? Well, 
what elements need to be here for the business community? Leslie says, um, from the residential household perspective and in keeping with the what's in it for me, make resources readily available. Example, free or inexpensive energy efficiency kits. Yeah, great idea. Um, Lauren says incentives. Ashley says grant programs for ultra small businesses because upfront costs may be cost prohibitive. Yep, absolutely. Um, Anna says, making recycling easier or more consistently available at apartments and businesses. That's great input. We appreciate your, your thoughts and we'll be sure to capture all of this. Um, Last comment, yeah, yeah. Sally said, if grants aren't possible, perhaps a no interest slash revolving loan fund. Thanks, Sally. Let's go to the last slide of our questions, and that's what's next? Are there any bases that we haven't covered uh, that you can see? And um, are there other organizations or individuals, groups that we need to include in our planning activity uh, in, our, in our research that uh, helps us develop the plan. What haven't we covered? One thing um, Leslie said from the last question was metrics that support real tangible results from other types of businesses and industries demonstrating the real value. I thought that was an important point to note. Thank you, Leslie. For the blue question, um, Joanne says, how to formalize partnerships? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other thoughts on organizations we need to involve and include that you've not heard us mention yet? Well, we still have approximately a, a full month and a half to get the plan drafted and complete our research. Master Gardeners is one suggestion. Uh, absolutely. And several people have mentioned them and we'll be sure to get in contact with them. Um, Chris says, not sure, but obviously the biggest carrot is transportation. Lauren says, I assume you've reached out to the conservation orgs in the area. Yes, we have. Thank you for mentioning that. And we plan to have a specific environmental focus group um, for the environmental organizations to help review the plan in addition to our stakeholder committee. We've also had, also had very good meetings with uh, Growth Alliance for Greater Evansville, the Downtown Economic Improvement District, and the Economic Development Coalition. Uh, Greg Wathen was very helpful. So uh, great input from all of them. Uh, Andrew says, I second the call for metrics, preferably leading leading metrics that will be the early indicator of success against the plan. Jennifer asks, do we have a rep from the zoo? I think we Jennifer's actually... raising her hand. Thank you, Jennifer. That's awesome, thank you. Anyone else? Communicating with neighborhood associations to address their needs slash concerns. Yes. So, we have contacted uh, uh, Kathy Davidson and are working to set up presentations to United Neighborhoods of Evansville, uh, specific neighborhood organizations. So we're gonna try to do uh, several of those between now and September. Other comments? Thanks for these. If you have other ideas, uh, please uh, type them and feel free to follow up by email as well uh, if you have other thoughts. And at this point, I'd like to thank you very much for your, your input and your suggestions, your participation this morning, and I'll turn it back over to Tara Barney to take us home. Thanks, Tara. And thank you all. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Timothy. And most important, thank, thank all of you who've joined this call. Uh, it is an important opportunity. It's, 
it may be an inflection point for our community. So it's one we want to make sure that the, uh, the business community and particularly the chamber are um, staying knowledgeable on and being helpful as we move through this process. I will observe that, uh, as Sally pointed out, uh, how Evansville goes, so goes much of this in the region because um, greenhouse gases don't, don't know what a municipal boundary looks like. So uh, as a regional organization, we are um, uh, highly interested in making sure we're being thoughtful and attentive to this as it offers opportunity for our whole region and uh, what that means going forward. So we'll pay attention to that. Um, shameless plug here. Our Environment and Energy Council does offer reg regular educational um, meetings. And we will have Michael Sears from Morley with us on um, August 19th to tell you everything you wanted to know about how NDOT uh, manages floodway permitting. We do live, in case you haven't noticed, in a giant floodway. And so uh, this, is, this is a, a timely opportunity for all of us that are engaged in construction or management or own businesses or homes that are in or near the, the floodways of our region. So uh, pay attention to our website and be in close touch, but we'd love to have you participate in that. But I don't want to lessen the impact of this conversation. Uh, we do look forward to having uh, several folks involved with the stakeholder group and helping you, Carolyn, and you, Timothy, Thank and you. all the others who are um, doing some very thoughtful work here on behalf of our region. So thank you for your leadership in this space and thank you all for what you're doing. I know many of you businesses on this call have massive plans in this space and probably couldn't put them in a chat. But I assure you that we are um, very aware or trying to become aware if we're not of the work you're doing and uh, do plan to make sure that we're highlighting and sharing uh, the extraordinary work that's, that's happening here in, in Greater Evansville in this, uh, in this area of work already. So much to do, many opportunities. Um, if we can get our heads around recycling, that will be a minor miracle, but uh, thank goodness for Republic and all of you that are doing great work in that space. Uh, so look forward for us to send you out some, um, some more content and please feel free to loop back and uh, share anything else that you'd like to make sure the chamber knows, that Chris Zerverback with the Environment and Energy uh, Council knows, or that we get to Carolyn and Tim. With that, I will, um, uh, look to you, Carolyn. Is there anything else we need to share, or can I thank everyone and sign off? Um, that sounds about it. If you have any questions for us, please email us at capcap at evansville.in.gov. We, again, do have our two coming upcoming town halls. They'll be similar in format to today's town hall. Um, but if you'd like to spread the word, they're tonight at 6 p.m. and tomorrow at 10 a.m., and you can register on our website. We also have our survey, so we'll follow up with that links for you all to send out to your network. And just thank you for being here and taking the time. We really appreciate it.